In this last video in the series, we'll describe what you will include or what you should include in a financial planning analysis for your venture. Um, in particular, this is what I would like to see in our financial planning, the financial planning portion of the business cases that we do. This is the written business plan. Um, different people will have different advice um, in a particular situation might be for different reasons and the like. But the bottom line is this is a, a good basis from which to decide whether you add more or less or in what levels you do that. First of all, you need to have a complete income statement balance sheet and I believe a modified or a simplified cash flow analysis that I described is what you really need to have in your business plan. You typically need three to five years. I like four years, it's in the middle, but also in addition to that, three years oftentimes is not enough to really show the business has caught on and has started sort of in its expansion phase. Um, anything more than five years and you're really pretty far out there and everyone realizes that there's a point where it's just sort of like fantasy almost to be making things up. So. You want to be somewhere in that range where the early stages of getting yourselves organized are over and success is clear in the financial statements, what the business is going to look like, the kinds of products you're going to sell, how many and to whom, what kind of profits are likely to be, um, to be gained from that. And you've shown that ramp, that launching pad, you're kind of like reached escape velocity somewhere in that range. You have to go at least to that point. It might be five years, sometimes with, with really long businesses like SpaceX, for example, it might be 10, 15 years. Uh, of course, the further out it is, the more you have to caveat it and justify the fact that you're, you're, there's so much uncertainty in such a plan. Typically, I like to see that those annual statements, those three annual statements for, like I said, three to five years, to go for four or have a reason to go longer or shorter. Um, but in addition, that first year, you should see a monthly monthly income statement, which is essentially your budget. How many people will you have? What do they cost you? How many units will you sell in that month? What is your monthly rent? I say monthly because typically that's when a lot of your bills are due. Your utilities are due, your rent is due, you pay people, you know, that sort of thing. So it's nice to know that you're sort of closing the books every month and what you look like in the first month and the second month and the third month um, for that first year. Um, in addition, you don't really need to have the income statement, I mean, excuse me, the balance sheet. You need the income statement and it's nice to have the cash flow as well. Not absolutely necessary because typically you're not buying capital equipment every month, but it's also helpful to just take it all the way down to that cash flow line. Um, it's also nice, again, this is extra, but I mean, it's a, like extra credit, if you will, but it's also nice to have quarterly statements for the first two years. Um, you want to be able to look at the first quarter and how you did in the second quarter versus the first quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, that sort of thing, so that you can then look at the second year and see the fifth quarter, or the second year, first quarter, second year, third quarter, and see that growth path. It's not enough to have monthly in the first year and quarterly in the second year because you don't really have a perspective on the quarterly numbers for the first year to, to make a judgment about year two quarterly. Just getting year two quarterly and no year one quarterly is, is sort of like not, not even worth it, not even worth doing that. So if you're going to do a quarterly, two years, redo monthly, redo the first year, the monthly numbers quarterly, and then add a second year quarterly numbers. Again, that's kind of the extra step. You have notes in there as well, as we discussed last time. And it's sometimes good to have extra schedules that are, you have like a, a drill down format, meaning what that means is that someone looks at the wages and salary line. You may have a schedule in your package or in the appendix that would include the employees, who they are, what their roles are, and what they're paid. You might have a drill down that goes into detail on the various pieces of equipment that were purchased and what they cost. You may have a drill down for your individual operating expenses, like what your rent is, your utilities, your telecom, all of that sort of thing. Development costs, you may have a drill down that shows the, the cost of development, developing your website, if you have a contract, what they're going to charge, all of those kinds of things. So the idea is, if there's a question, 
you can go and dr drill down simply means you go down another level of detail and take a look in more, more deeply. For example, you might have your, your uh, annual income statement with just general expenses and, and aggregate, but then you might have a drill down that has the operating expenses listed in a great bit, great more bit of detail in that first year for someone that's interested in understanding in more detail where the money is going. So those are the sorts of things that you will include in your income statement and balance sheet and cash flow in the business plan. Lastly, a word about formatting. The formatting should be professional. The model that I'll go through and go over in more detail in class does not do formatting. It just does the calculations. It's up to you if you want to, you know, to present in a very professional manner to do your own formatting in terms of what you print and how you print it, what you hide, and the annual, the monthly, and all that. You can, we can talk about it if you want some advice on how to do that. But don't expect to print, press a button and get good, nicely, professionally formatted spreadsheets and balance, and I mean, uh, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. You have to do a little bit extra to make that presentation really nice from the material, from the model that I give you. There are other software packages out there that do this sort of thing. It's not what this is. I want you to do it yourself. Um, and if you want to do that, it's really not, it's really like, just like a bonus to do that, to make it look pretty. Um, that's like, that's a work. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's not absolutely necessary. Most important is to get the numbers right. So in general, that's the sum, the summation, three to five years of annual statements, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, 12 months, that first balance sheet, or excuse me, that first income statement for that first 12 months. Nice to have quarterly for the first year and the second year. Nice notes, drill down, format, um, and then um, then have a, have nicely formatted balance sheet and income statement and balance sheet in the plan itself in the write up. You don't need all this. This is more like an appendix. You typically want the annual income statement, balance sheet, and modified cash flow annual in the write up of the plan, and then more detail in appendices. So that summarizes the venture financial planning, what you do, how you think about it, what it's doing for you and for your team, and also what's the expectation with respect to what's included in the business plan. This is the final video in this venture financial planning series, so we look forward to seeing you in the next set of videos.